Just chilling. Oh. The jingle played. There it is, the second I started talking. So I don't know what that announcement said, but maybe it said, Hey everybody, hanging out at Kita Hachioji Station. We're on holiday hours, so forget about trains coming. They're uh, going to take forever. No, apparently what it said is the train to go in the direction of uh, Hachioji is arriving, because there it is. But I'm going the other way, so I still got to wait. It is New Year's Eve, but I have no New Year's plans, because I didn't even realize it was that day. I forgot till I was leaving the house. And I'm like, oh yeah, right, that's today. But yeah, I never really do stuff for holiday type crap, because... Uh, I often don't even know what day it is. There'd be a lot of days, especially during COVID, where I would leave my house and I would go walk down through the park near my house so I wouldn't really see anybody. And then I'd get to the bottom of the hill and realize there were no cars in the supermarket parking lot and be like, well, what the hell holiday is this now? <laughs> it was always some weird long weekend or something that I had no idea was happening. When you're a fucking trust fund dickhead who's working on their novel, doesn't matter what day it is <laughs> so no new year's eve plans but i do have plans however luckily i actually got here right about when the train is arriving because here it is so we will save those for a moment it's another absurdly beautiful day the uh the wind has picked up a little which is kind of good because it was like uncomfortably warm before <laughs> it's like too warm to take off my jacket and it's like fuck but I did a little holiday call home yesterday now that I'm not packed in with a bunch of people in bunk beds and stuff I can actually talk without just keeping everybody awake all night and it's uh, unseasonably warm in Canada as well so I do think I just got really lucky this year I think your average winter visit to the Tokyo area is probably not it's probably still pretty good but it's probably not this good, where it's like ludicrously, you know, late summer, very early fall type weather. This is uh, unusual, it seems. And I did some research about the Okutama area. I'll ramble about that in a bit, but it's actually, there's a little more traffic right now than I thought there would be. So I'll just wait till I get past this stretch. But what my plan is for today is I went to Ome Station a few episodes back and I kind of brute forced my way onto this mountain trail. I didn't have the proper entrance. I had to kind of climb up on a ridge and follow some survey markers till I hit an official path. But then once I got up there, there were all kinds of cool paths between Ome and Akiruno. I think the neighborhood in the middle was Hinode. So I'm gonna try to get back up into that trail system but on a real trail. I'm kind of trying to do it in reverse and then hopefully I'll come out near Ome and then I'll just know for future, should I want to go back there, how, how you're supposed to get in there, how you're supposed to start. Because actually, now that I know how to do it, my brute force method wasn't that bad of like going up behind this garage and going down a mountain path that just kind of peters out. But now that I know, you can just climb up the ridge and in like 10 minutes or something, you're connected to the path. It's actually not that bad, but I'm just curious how it's supposed to work. So I went two stations beyond Ome. I got off at Hinatawada Station, H-I-N-A-T-A-W-A-D-A. -A -A -A, and I'm just heading down some highways. So I'm going down Highway 45 and then 238 past Gojo Construction Materials. <laughs> and then a little ways down here, there's one of those nice dotted lines on Google Maps. So there's a lot more paths and trails than there are on Google Maps. So if a dotted line path does show up on Google Maps, it's probably a relatively major trail. So I'm just gonna try to get to that and see what that is and see where that goes. And it's in the same vicinity so if all goes well, it'll link up to the path system I was on last week. And if all doesn't go well, I'll just have a random adventure.
Man, this Route 238 is actually really pretty. <laughs> it's just this really narrow little two-lane, little two-lane road through the mountains. Got a little sidewalk on one side, and it is just, uh, I guess like one thing I like about neighborhoods like this, it reminds me a lot of my uncle's house. He lives in Pennyac, New Brunswick. And he's just kind of a mechanic and he just has, I don't know, I mean, <laughs> kind of a ramshackle house. <laughs> he still has it, he's had it since I was a kid. And uh, like they just got high speed internet. Like last year I was up there visiting. And yeah, I mean, in this day and age, it's just, you think everybody has high speed internet, but it was a big deal to get it that far out of the city. So this has that same vibe of just like mechanic-y type stuff and the houses are really, uh, I mean, they're maintained, but they're, but like I'm looking at one right now that is a really nice little house, really cool looking little house. But all the paint on the sides and on the roof is really worn off. Like everything's functional. No one cares what anything looks like, <laughs> you know? And there are just the occasional uh, yards just filled with random junk. <laughs> that is a little unlike Japan. But it's just kind of a nice vibe. It's just kind of cool. And the fact that it's not way out of town, it's not like, oh my God, how do you even get there in the winter and you don't get to have high speed internet or whatever. It's all still pretty close. I mean, I'm walking distance from, from a subway station right now. I guess I should say train station, not subway, since it's not underground, but hey, whatever. Just kind of using it colloquially. But yeah, there's big mountains all around me and the big trees and stuff. It's just real pretty, real pretty. There's like, as the sun rays <laughs> come down through these trees, there's like a mist in the air and it just looks really cool. Man, I thought I got going semi-early today, but it's a uh, quarter to two in the afternoon. I guess just the, the travel, even though I'm in West Tokyo, but walking to the station and then taking a train and transferring and taking another train and then I did transfer again to get two stations past Ome. It was a pretty short ride that only cost like four dollars, but it all adds up. It eats up the day pretty fast. Now there's a lot of little uh, trails I've passed, but I don't know where they go. I mean, probably most of them won't go anywhere. <laughs> they probably just kind of go peter out into the woods. So I'm gonna wait till I get to the real one, the major one. Yeah, I'm just passing Gojo construction now, so not that much further. And then if something went terribly wrong, for whatever reason, if this path isn't there or whatever, I mean, at this point, I guess I'd probably just turn around and go back, but you could, you could just keep going straight through to Akiruno. This is a, a relatively comfortable road with its nice little sidewalk. Yeah, here's another path into the woods, but it's going the other way. All right, well, unfortunately, uh, this plan did not work out, but uh, I'm just heading back the way I came now, but it's only 10 after two. I did not eat up a lot of time on this, and it's still, what a nice walk. <laughs> I really like this weird little random street, and I'm just looking up now, like between, kind of going down a hill. At this point, it kind of goes up and down. Oh, here's a jogger. This is interesting. I wonder what his plan is, because the sidewalk disappears on this street. Where the hell is he going? Maybe he's just gonna come back. I guess we'll see. Little jogging ASMR. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like looking up at the trees as I walk. It's really beautiful here. But uh, yeah, uh, the blue dot disappeared on my little map, which is rare. That doesn't happen too often. I was doing some shenanigans where I was using, I have two phones and only one of them has the Google lens that you need to do the camera translate. So I brought up the, uh, the map on one phone and was using the other phone to translate it. It actually worked, but I think that uh, I messed up. My little dot disappeared at some point. My location services got goofed up, but I don't remember the name of it. It's something rather past, but it doesn't matter because it's just, it's just not there. <laughs> like once my little blue dot came back, I realized I was past the point where the trail was supposed to be. And the fact that I had just walked clear by without seeing anything was a bad sign. And I went back and forth like five or six times really making sure, but it's like I was really having to stretch to find anything. I was like, well, you know, if I climb up this embankment and there's an opening in that wall concrete barricade up there 
and then you could walk up the side of this like no this doesn't none of this makes sense and the sidewalk disappeared on this street which <laughs> made it go from this nice cool pleasant pretty walk that it is right now straight to you're just walking on the freaking highway and there's cars everywhere and it's awful that's where i'm curious to see if jogger man comes back this way because if he's pushing all the way through this street gets a lot less pleasant at the point where it changes from 238 and becomes 251. That happens pretty much right where this path is supposed to be. And yeah, that's one thing I'll give Japan big credit for is uh, it's usually very evident when something's not right, when something's not working out. You know, like supposedly there was a trail there that went either the way I wanted to go or if it went the other way, it would have taken a person to one of the, uh, the peaks of the mountains around here. But I don't know what's going on, it wasn't there, but that's, that's fine. No problem, because I got a backup plan. And even though I don't have a ton of time in the day, I should have plenty of time for this one, because this one's pretty easy. So, let me tell you what I learned about Okutama. So I went to Okutama, and I went up the terrifying stairs to Atago Shrine, which is interesting, because I learned yesterday when I was Googling around, if you search YouTube for Atago Shrine Stairs, there's another shrine called that that has some fairly famous stairs because they're like, the stairs of success. You go up these stairs and it gives you success in your day. So if you happen to be uh, Googling around, that ain't the one. Those stairs are just normal stairs. You gotta dig up Okutama, dig a little deeper to find this thing. And uh, I didn't find a ton of people talking about it, but everyone who did, they all said the same thing, which was that the camera is not getting what's going on here which is that the flatness of video or of pictures, it just, uh, you just don't get the sense of the steepness of those terrifying stairs. But then people did say that uh, that is the worst part. That is the weirdest, most bizarre part of that particular trek. If you keep going, there's nothing else like that. So at first I was like, oh darn, maybe I should have kept going instead of going back down the stairs. But it is better that I went down because it's like this triple peak, that's why the sign mentioned three different mountains. It's this triple peak hike that supposedly is really nice and is really well laid out and is not especially hard. It's just very long. I saw different things that either said it was a four to five hour hike or a seven to eight hour hike, which is a significant difference. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe those two routes are different peaks, I don't know. But either way is really just too long, especially a seven, eight hour hike. That's nuts. I would do that like if I had a friend with me here who was into hiking and we got up crazy early and we were gonna do that, that'd be one thing. But I would not do that by myself. That's way too long. I don't need that, <laughs> you know? I, if I take a little one or two hour hike, completely remaining in the vicinity of drink machines and convenience stores, I feel fine about that. I feel very accomplished about my day, <laughs> you know? Obviously, if you're on a seven hour hike, that's where your hiking poles and your big fucking backpack and all that stuff. Like any hike where you actually require that stuff, that's not, that ain't, that ain't me, dog. That's not what I'm here to do. <laughs> so yeah, in the event that I'm ever in Japan with one of my friends who's into that kind of hikey stuff, I got that tucked away in the back of my mind. That'd be a neat thing to do. But that's quite a serious adventure. That's a little much. But, uh, but I think what's interesting, what I might look into a bit is it doesn't need to be a triple crown like that. It doesn't need to be all three peaks. Like it's very interesting that you can do that, but you really don't need to. Cause even just the station I got off at today had maps all over the place and signs and things directing a person to one of those peaks. If even, actually. It might not be specifically one of those peaks. It could be a different one, because there's just a ton of them. There's just mountains all over the place here. So you could just pick one of the peaks, figure out where the closest station is to that peak, and just go do that. Just go up the one mountain, come back. We take you the afternoon. Not nearly as big of an ordeal. <laughs> not this non-stop crazy hike. But that also explains why I saw so many people at Mitake Station because that's where the end of the triple mountain hike ends. That's like the, uh, you know, or you can start from there. You can go either way. So presumably, since I was uh, a little late getting going yesterday, that's what was happening. Those were the people who set off in the morning and they were done their hike for the day and they were getting on the train there to go the heck home. 
But yeah, I think that's an interesting idea because you don't need to just push through. You could just do one and come back. I don't know if I will do that, but that's way more approachable. That's definitely in the back of my mind, but it is still one of those things too. It's just, it is a little hard to say. I mean, I definitely want to do something I can easily bail out of because even though everyone says like, oh, those stairs, that's the worst part. Everything is much easier after that. It was also very evident just watching people do their hike videos because that's specific. You can actually find quite a bit of stuff if you search for that specific mountain. Mount Odake, O-D-A-K-E, that's the first of the triple mountains. So if you search for that, there's a lot of people posting their videos of doing that through hike. And yet people don't like those steps, but they were more talking about basically just the, uh, the steepness. One or two people on the Google Maps review mentioned like, hey, is it just me or if I fell down this, would that be a serious problem? <laughs> you know, most other people just thought they were notable because it was such a steep way to start a hike. So for me, it was clearly different. Going up wasn't really a problem. I could go up five sets of those before I started having real trouble. It was the steepness. It was the jelly legs. It was the vertigo. It was like just, just the, the height that I felt going up there was was wild man <laughs> it's like very very un unpleasant phantom doggies i don't even see you doggies where are you doggies so anyway that's where i wonder you know even though people are saying like oh the rest of the hike's not that bad but if they are not freaked out by heights the way that i am maybe they just wouldn't recognize <laughs> that it is terrifying I think my best bet is just not to go that far west because it does seem very clear that the farther west you go, the more severe the terrain gets and I just don't want to fuck with that. There's plenty of other peaks and plenty of other hikes. Which brings us to today's backup plan because as I was looking at people's videos about Okutama, that idea of walking along the river and walking between the stations was not impossible but less than pleasant way out at Okutama but I saw this one video in particular that was like an hour-long walk from Sawai Station S-A-W-A-I to Mitake. I'm actually surprised would that really take an hour? That's only one station. But basically that's right at the start. How I mentioned last episode that right when you get to Ikusabata Station that's where the uh, terrain changes. That's where you're into the mountains. So that's only one more station beyond that. And yeah, they just had this beautiful, nice stroll along the edge of the water. Everything is very flat at that point still. Very casual. It's just clearly a path meant to be walked down. And because that video was in the summer, people were like swimming in the river and it was like the freaking jungle book. It was idyllic. It was beautiful. So I got enough time if I just, uh, Beeline it back to the train, which is what I'm doing right now. I think I want to try to walk two stations. Just one station is a very short walk. And again, I mean, this is all easy to bail out of before the terrain gets crazy, jagged, and insanely mountainous. I tucked that away as like, oh, that's a really fun little easy thing I can do. It'll be great for like a day when I'm really slow getting going and I don't have a ton of time left in the day. I'll just go do that little walk. It looks great. Didn't expect to do it today, but now it's like the perfect backup plan because having failed my first plan, you know, it's like 2.30 now. 2.30, time is not exactly on my side. So I'm gonna do that. The question is, do I start at Ikusabata or do I go to Metake and go in reverse? Doesn't really matter just got to flip a mental coin and decide on one or the other but I will do that on my journey yeah there we go I'm back back to civilization now hop over to the station recalibrate the plan all right I'm back at Hinatawada station and uh, there's a timetable here timetable of Ome line Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays, and I do not know what this means. Is it... Okay, well, we got... The first number, I guess, is 24 hours. Okay, the first number must be the hour, which we're at 2.52. 
So if I go to 14 o'clock, well, I guess we'll go to 15 because it's going to be three. Because it's like, it must be that the numbers after that are when it arrives the minute. So if I'm reading this right, there'll be one at 310 and one at 341. So that's not bad. I got 18 minutes to wait. I don't know. Is that what that means? Because the weekday schedule is not much different. <laughs> I mean, maybe this is just a really unpopular line. Whatever. I don't know. And then, yeah, between midnight and 4 a.m., no trains. That must be, that has to be what that means. All right, so I decided I'm going to go to Isukabata Station and then walk west past Sawai to Matake. So I don't know for sure how the walk from Ikusabata to Sawai will go, but probably fine. And then, you know, I've already seen but probably fine, and I've already seen YouTube evidence that the second leg, so why to, to Matake, is, uh, is all good, is quite a gorgeous little riverside walk next to the Okutama Bible Chalet, apparently. And yeah, it'll definitely be getting dark at that point. Perfect time to just bail out. It sure is nice to walk next to train lines, <laughs> because what can go wrong? How bad can it possibly go? Man, it's already the single track I noticed here, too. You really don't have to go far before the single track happens. I mean, maybe that one train that I just saw go by the other way right before I got here, maybe it just does have to go all the way to Ome and back. Probably it does. But yeah, I decided to walk west because of the sun. It's like, oh yeah, of course, just so the sun will be behind me. That makes sense. If I can go either way, of course, pick the way where the sun's not in your face. However, it's not especially important right now because it clouded over really fast. It was like a really warm, downright hot, super clear day. And now it's really cloudy all of a sudden. Which reminded me that I have not returned my umbrella to my arsenal. Unless I like lay it out in front of me. <laughs> like if I don't put it in the inner pocket of my jacket, like when I get home, like, I don't know, I just will not remember in the morning. It is, it's impossible. I will literally never remember. But then the problem is I got to also remember when I get home. <laughs> I just don't know how I'm ever going to possibly remember to do that. My brain is the opposite of a steel trap. It is a sieve. Hmm, geez, though, I just noticed there's a waiting room here. I'm the only one at this little wee station right now. There's a little waiting room here that has a shitload of umbrellas. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and they're clearly just abandoned. I mean, they're just sitting here in the station. Given the ominousness of uh, these clouds, they don't look especially dark. They're fairly, well, I don't know. <laughs> they're not like gray clouds, but they're not exactly fully white either. I think I'm gonna take one of these umbrellas. I mean, if not for this situation, what else are they for? And then when I get to the end of my walk, I could just leave it at that station. I don't even necessarily have to take stewardship of one of these umbrellas. I'm just moving them from one station to the next. Though if I were to take one, I could leave it in the closet of the Airbnb. And then there would be an umbrella for the next person. I think I might do that. I am gonna steal an umbrella. Cause there's no way all these umbrellas are ever gonna get love. There are too many of them sitting here. I'll give you love umbrella. I'll give you a new life. But yeah, these umbrellas, I do like these Japanese umbrellas cause they tend to be quite large but they're just uh, long as well. They don't fold down. They're very hard to uh, just have one tucked away. You kind of just need to grab one when you need one. I guess that's what's happening today. I need one and I have one. So uh, I was looking at one of the local area maps and this seems like a very interesting potential candidate for a mini hike for not one of these super crazy hikes that is beyond my comfort level. 
So yeah, there's a path from this station to Mount Mimurayama, M-I-M-U-R-O-Y-A-M-A. 650 meters, past a little shrine, and then you can just come straight down and return to the Tama River. Or you can continue on to the next peak, and then if you go to the third peak over, that's Mitake. It's like an alternate version of the Triple Crown. But yeah, like I just don't need to do that. I don't need to do the triple thing. I could just go up the one mountain that is not that far. And if anything goes wrong on the way, just just don't go. Just come back. I think I might try that. That seems pretty cool. Because that's the other thing with these, like, the seven-hour triple fucking super gangbang fucking <laughs> trip. Is like, you know, probably it would be fine. But just what if it wasn't? What if something did go wrong? Then I just gotta wait? Like, what if I sprain my ankle and I can't move or something? I gotta wait for someone else to show up? And then what? It's still not gonna be a clean solution to that problem. I just don't love the idea of going on a hike where I'm far away from society. Because why? Why bother? There's no need. I can go up one mountain and have a heck of a day. I don't need to go up three. What am I, fucking Johnny fucking Mountain Seed? If you were under that impression, I'll tell you right now that I'm not. <laughs> I am not that person. <laughs> See, I'm gonna look into that a little. I think that could be cool. And if I did, in fact, read the timetable correctly, I got 11 minutes to go. No problem. Well, this turned out pretty well. I think I picked the right spot. So as soon as you get off of the train at Ikusabata, there's immediately a sign for Mount Takamizu and the Ome Hill hiking course. Which again, hey, who knows, that could be cool in its own right. Like there's so many mountains here, it's fucking cool. It's like pretty much every station has kind of got its own mountain, it seems. I mean, I haven't been to every single one, but it seems likely because there is just endless mountains around here. So that's kind of cool. It's like each station has just got like, all right, here's our trek up to our closest mountain. You could definitely spend some time fucking uh, doing this. And I really do like the, uh, I like my chances for my plan of not stringing together multiple mountains. Again, it's very neat that that's optional, that you can do that. That's cool if you're Jimmy Joe hiker guy. But if you just want to go to the nearest mountaintop to the station and come back, it seems like there are many, many options for that. But then the other way, Matake Valley Walking Trail. Or later, the other sign called it Matake Valley Riverside Trail. And I'm like, perfect, that is what I want. Yes, please, <laughs> just a nice riverside walk. But you definitely cannot walk down the Tama River just wherever you want, because it still took about 500 meters to get to the trail, but it's very well marked and there's signs everywhere and then a big arrow, go down these steps. And that's where I am right now, walking along the edge of the river, fucking beautiful as all goddamn hell. <laughs> It's a little bit of a shame that it clouded over, so it's not that uh, just pure, popping, incredible summertime sun look. This is the overcast, sort of just somewhat dim, grayish day look. But the water has still got that like greenish blue, unreal quality. This would have looked really cool if I got here earlier in the day. <laughs> I should definitely try to come do this on a really sunny day if I get a chance. But I noticed that behind me, there's basically no shoreline at all. So you really do need to be on this specific walking trail part of the river. And yeah, conveniently, it just happens to start extremely close to where I got off the train. And then maybe it goes on further than Matake Station. But uh, my plan is to stop there for today. But Okutama's really coming together. <laughs> Going all the way to the end and stumbling upon the entrance to the king of all hikes was a bit of a peculiar start. <laughs> didn't, didn't go so amazingly well. But now that I'm... Uh, teasing out the less severe elements of this part of Tokyo, they're pretty delightful. 
Man, the uh, density of experience visiting Japan really is fucking crazy. You know, we're back in, uh, back in my hometown. I mean, I just had limited options. So many, many days, then weeks, then months would go by with like, you know, I mean, I still had some nice little hikes around wherever I had available to me, but nothing that particularly sticks in the mind, you know, they're all, they're all kind of like one big experience. Mainly there's a park called Odell Parks that was near where I lived and it was like a, a fun little place to hike through. But I hiked through it a thousand times, <laughs> so I don't really remember specific days very well. Whereas here in Japan, it's like, it seems so crazy to think that two days ago, two fucking days ago, I was fearing for my life <laughs> around the borders of Mount Takao yesterday fucking yesterday I felt like I was in the sky like I was flying in a bad way out by Okutama station and now today I'm walking along this fucking trail next to this river there's like a big boulder that I'm passing that has gotten lodged behind a tree there's a bunch of really big rocks here there's not a soul around I suspect this trail, if I remember my YouTube preview correctly, it'll get more developed as I go, but man, down at this end, this is clearly the part that doesn't get a ton of use. Not a soul here, it's just this really rough trail along the edge of the river. Just the fact that these wildly disparate experiences, maybe not wildly different, <laughs> I guess they're all just walking through nature, but within the container of walking through nature they're pretty fucking different feeling and that they're just happening day after day after day and that this kind of thing stretches back now for so many days for like two whole months <laughs> it's just like what the fuck i have no idea what i'm gonna do tomorrow but if i wanted to go do some weird fucking vr arcade thing like i could i could do that as well I don't tend to lean that much toward that type of thing in Japan, but that's all here as well. It's fucking amazing. What a good country to visit, man. It's just fucking, it's really fucking good. Because <laughs> now I'm like going under these gnarled trees that are uh, jutting out from the side of the shore. And I can see above me, like I don't think the road is actually that far away but it's the opposite of being up on a mountain where you can hear everything because nothing is blocking the sound. Down here, the borders of the shore are blocking the sound because it's not deep like the gorge of the ravine was deep at Okutama, but it's getting there, you know? I am down in a valley, and then with the river water on the other side, it's like all of fucking society has just disappeared. See you later. <laughs> now I'm just in like a goddamn... I was gonna say a Norman Rockwell painting, but it's a little too fucking rough and tumble for that. <laughs> this feels more like... I mean, I don't know. I don't know who. <laughs> this is like a... I guess if like the character from Hatchet had spent some time painting instead of worrying about his mother's divorce like a bitch, this is what he would have painted. You ever notice that in the sequels to Hatchet, they never bring that up again? It was really weird in that book where he's just like, just having these weird psychopath serial killer thoughts about how much he hates his mom's divorce. <laughs> it's very strange. Anyway, this is goddamn nice. And this is the backup plan. What the hell, man? <laughs> what the hell, Japan? You're fucking really, really, you're really fucking good. All right, I think I'm about halfway. It's definitely becoming a lot more developed. We're kind of pushed up now, uh, just walking behind people's houses and stuff. It's a lot less just uh, purely in the, the rough nature by the shore. 
But I do think that makes it kind of worth it to start that one station earlier than Sawai because it is cool to walk down that bit where it is just super rugged. Now it's much more just like a concrete path behind people's houses. Still very nice though. I felt a raindrop hit my hand. And behind me, the clouds are still quite clear. You can like very clearly feel the sun still pulsing through them. But ahead of me, this, <laughs> the clouds are getting extremely dark and ominous. So I just felt a couple more little drops on my knuckles. Oh, now I'm crossing a little bridge and I can see the raindrop markings on the bridge because <laughs> you can't really see them on the path. But yeah, it's another thing of like, if, if I was way out in the middle of nowhere, I'd be like, uh-oh, oh no, rain, potential disaster. But since I'm walking just between stations, you know, like there's a very limited amount of time it would take me to get out of here, <laughs> you know, pretty much any direction I go, there's a station not too far from me. And in fact, here's a little marker it says 70 kilometers to something. Hmm. Let's see if we can translate that. But yeah, I was thinking, I mean, not only am I by the subways, I got this umbrella. I'm like, man, bring it on. <laughs> I could go for some rain. If the sky opened the fuck up right now, it'd be like exciting. That'd be cool. I would have no problem with that at all under these circumstances. All right, the top of this post is not translatable because it's very rusted. 70 kilometers from the sea. Hmm. Ome City. Target high, 206 meters. I don't know quite what any of this means. Hello. Hello. Some people on bicycles just went by, a dad and his son, so that's how well paved this is. You can, you can bike on this part of it, the earlier part. Uh, no way. 70 kilometers from the sea. What an odd thing to uh, remark upon. But yeah, this rain, oh, it's picking up a little bit now. I'm gonna open my stolen umbrella. Poop. <laughs> some uh, rain sounds. Yeah, it's weird how like when rain before it gets really heavy, it's a little hard to tell how hard it's coming down. It's a little bit invisible, but that's, that's a pretty good pitter patter. That is actually pretty handy. I've never really gone in those um, little waiting rooms much in stations, but I don't believe they generally have umbrellas. I think that's that's mostly a function of it being such a rural station. But that sure was handy. Because if there was only one umbrella, I definitely would not have taken it. And if there was like even two or three, I probably would hesitate. I don't know that I would. But when there's nine umbrellas... Ah, man, this is fucking nice. <laughs> Just a nice little walk through the pitter-patter. The pitcher patcher of the rain. I really got to remember to put my fucking collapsible umbrella because all I got to do is put it in the inside pocket of my coat and I'll forget it's even there. And it's got a broken spoke. It's not very good, but in an emergency situation, it's very easy to have on me and it would sure help. Although if I ever do get caught in a full on downpour, I do have one of those little like disposable 7-Eleven rain coat things that packs down really small, tucked away in my little day bag. Day bag, ah -ha. So if I really got in trouble, I at least got that. But that's a whole to do. And once I take it out of its little package and open it up, I don't know that it's ever going back in there. <laughs> so umbrellas, man, umbrellas are just handy. Not optional, I gotta keep reminding myself. Umbrella is not optional, it needs to be part of my arsenal. God, I wish I could just <laughs> somehow guarantee that I would remember. If I even just had like an actual phone, I would just text myself right now. 
I would text myself the word umbrella. But uh, unfortunately, I cannot do that. <laughs> I have nothing. No phone connectivity at all. Oh, the dad and his son are <laughs> they're hiding under a bridge to get away from the rain. What a nice little bonding moment. Oh, now they're heading back the other way. <laughs> I'm glad I got to observe their, their adventure, even though I guess they had to cut it short. That's cool though. I like little, little moments like that are nice. Oh, geez, look at that. There's a freaking washroom. Well, don't mind if I do. <laughs> and not just like a washroom, not like some rural ass washroom. This is like the full deal. It's got lights that are on. It's got Western style toilets. It's got an accessibility toilet in the middle. Oh, they're coming back my way. There they go, biking away, biking through the rain. <laughs> Good luck, y'all. Okay, back to, back to my peeing mission. I'm gonna go pee. Well, the rain ended already. I think I'm coming toward the end. I'm almost at Matake Station. So this definitely gets a thumbs up. What a nice, easy little... <laughs> this is definitely... It's like I'm uh, pinpointing, I guess, what I like. This is certainly what I like. Because even like my hikes through the woods in um, Fukuoka in particular, is I still like the hike part, I guess, better than the dizzying heights of the mountain, <laughs> you know? Because a lot of times hiking through a mountain just feels like hiking through the woods. It's hard to even be aware that you're on a mountain a lot of times because there's just trees everywhere. Apparently it is that way also on that, uh, the triple peak route from those terrifying stairs at Okutama. One of the little hiking reviews I read said there was only like two spots where there was like a very clear opening in the trees and you could really get like a good picture or whatever. Other than that, it's just glimpses through the trees of the city below. So, I mean, I suspect I probably wouldn't have too bad of a time with that hike, but it's just too long. <laughs> it's just, there's no need. This is much more my speed. This whole thing was like an hour literally right next to a road, but with the illusion that you're not next to a road. Fucking perfect. <laughs> the best of all worlds. So yeah, I would recommend this little jaunt for sure. I can't even imagine what some of this shit would look like in the snow. I know it's quite rare for snow to happen in Tokyo and its environs, but man, that'd be cool. But yeah, I wonder, there's so few New Year's Eves that I remember. I remember New Year's Eve 1999, even though I was just at my parents' house, but it was just such a big New Year's. I remember who I was hanging out with and my friends were all there and we were just fucking around playing Quake and Starcraft and shit. But I remember that one. I remember New Year's 2008 because I lived in New York and the girl I dated there took me to some cool ass <laughs> New Year's Eve rave. Certainly the kind of thing I would never have done normally, but I definitely remember that one. That was an okay night. I wonder if I'll remember this one, because I will definitely remember this day. I will definitely remember this route. Will I remember that it was New Year's? <laughs> like, probably not. I feel like that, that detail is going to slip. Whenever I get around to editing this episode of the podcast in the future, I'll be like, oh yeah, that was New Year's. Because, I mean, you know, New Year's doesn't mean anything. There's no relevance. But there's a chance, there's a pretty strong chance that if I'm gonna remember another New Year's... <laughs> geez, I mean, like, is, is that it? Do I only remember those two? Wild. Oh, no, I remember one in Toronto. <laughs> it was, it was fucking weird as fuck. We used to do this podcast called The Vinyl Countdown, where just me and my friends would just hang out and tell jokes. And I remember that New Year's. We tried a thing where half of us got stoned and the other half got drunk. I was on the drunk side. And man, it did not work because the drunk in this <laughs> makes the person want to talk 
and the stone didness makes a person not want to talk. It was a bad mix, but we just thought like, hey, it's fucking New Year's, let's do something stupid. <laughs> so I do remember that one. <laughs> but that was a really bad podcast. You'd never want to listen back to that fucking thing. So yeah, I mean, in that very, uh, it's not much of a list. <laughs> but this ranks up there for sure. This is a great, this was a great New Year's Eve day thing to do. I'll remember the day, for sure. Probably won't remember the date. What I will definitely not be doing <laughs> is just trying to sneak my way onto Mount Takao. Oh man, I gotta get on the mountain before they, they cut it off so no one else can get on there just so I can see the sunrise. God damn it. <laughs> I feel uh, advanced sympathy for the people that are gonna do that even though they have not set off on that journey yet. Oh, here's a guy in a kayak coming down the river. I was thinking, because those uh, posts keep popping up, where we were 70 kilometers from the sea, and the last one I saw was 70.6 kilometers from the sea, and here's one right here. Conveniently, 71 kilometers from the sea. Maybe that's why. I mean, you can't read those things from up here. <laughs> but maybe it is uh, if you're tubing. What if you're just in a fucking inner tube and you're going down the river? Because of course it eventually empties into Tokyo Bay. 70 kilometers this guy in his kayak has got to go till he gets to the ocean. Though presumably he would not wish to get there, right? That's not what he would want to do. <laughs> And he's in fact going the other way. What is happening? Okay, I guess he's just turning around. I was like, there's no way you could be kayaking up the river, you fucking mad lad. That's, that's insane. Yeah, there's a sign ahead of me that says JR station up these stairs. And there is a really tall high bridge right in front of me that I'm glad I do not have to cross. There were opportunities to cross the river before now. So you could do that if you're into heights. <laughs> you could definitely cross over and come across this. I believe the YouTube video I watched, the walking video, did do that. And it was the only part, you know, I just scrubbed through. I just uh, fast forwarded my way through, but I was like, dude, I don't want like that, but whatever. It's one little bridge, I'll survive. But you don't have to do it at all. Cause yeah, this is like serious Shadow of the Colossus vibes. It's like a big white archway, but it's got vines growing all over it. There's some people walking walking across it above me. Jeez, what is this kayak guy doing? He's still just kind of going around in the same area. He really does appear to be going up the river. Is he turning around again? I mean, that is like, that is some serious shit, dude. If you want to fucking exercise, I guess, trying to kayak up a river. I mean, I respect it, but it's weird to do why don't you just go down the river, man? That sounds a lot better. But yeah, he just keeps turning around. Maybe he's going in between... There's like little poles sticking up, maybe. So maybe he's just sort of slaloming around in this one area. Huh. I don't know shit about the life of kayakers. Who, uh, who can fathom the mind of the kayaking man? I do respect it though, pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, well, I'm gonna head up these steps to the JR station, call that one a day. Things are turning around uh, for my West Tokyo adventures after a couple of days of unexpected strange terror. Today was just plain sweet. Even when a plan doesn't work out, it's still kind of nice in and of itself, and then it just collapses into a backup plan. How can you fucking argue with that? All right, thank you for listening. I will blab to you on the next episode. Adios. <laughs>